Hyperland is what we are looking at today. I have a new configuration, one that you probably have not seen. And if you don't know about this, it could change your life. For those that really have tried Hyperland in the past, I've personally tried it multiple times. Um, for this or that reason, I always end up going back to like an Xorg DWM type setup because I just like really staple minimal systems. This one is not minimal but is awesome looking and has a lot of customizations and I love it. It's made by Jay Coolit actually, that uses Hyperland made by Vaxery. And I've tried Hi Va uh, Vaxery's Hyperland all the way back from 0 0.2, uh, back when he first launched it, and all the way to today. I've also tried in the past M4W's uh, configuration. So this one is probably the most put together one. Uh, first off, uh, let's change the wallpaper has like nice little prompts and highlights to this. So you can just kind of pick whatever you want to do. If you want a, a Japanese street, bam, it's it's in here. I'm getting the opinion that Jay Coolit might, uh, oh, I think he's actually South Korean. So it actually kind of makes sense. Uh, Fuji light, that sounds, ooh, I like that. That's kind of cool. Um, so you get kind of like this whole theming and up at the top, it's using Waybar. Uh, and the way bar can be customized a bunch of different ways too. And there's hotkeys for it. So we can change the style of it. Uh, you can go really bright and flashy. Uh, I kind of like something a little more low key, like a capuchin mocha, I think is a, a nice, simple aesthetic kind of reminds me of Nord a bit. And I really like that, but there's also the style of it that also is hot keyed. So let's say you want to go simple bottom. It'll take that way bar shifted to the bottom down here. Pretty slick. And I'm like, dang, this is neat where normally you'd have to do a whole, whole bunch of different configurations. And there goes 30 minutes to just show you what I've shown in this little bit. Um, and I, I think the defaults here, if you look at like top default, it kind of has a lot of stuff. Most people in Hyperland like a lot of the whiz bang features. I'm a pretty simpleton and I like more minimal. So I always end up just going, you know what? Just give me top simple. I only want to see window title time and then what's open on my current system. So that's that's my thought process here and just the basic configurations. But it goes a bit further too. It has a hot key to edit all the configurations. You can edit window rules. So certain programs only open in certain uh, windows. So a good example of this is I have all my virtual machines. So like, let's say I want to open up windows. Uh, let's just open this guy up windows 11. Notice where it opens it up using window rules. This has been set to where if I go to workspace six, all my virtual machines always open here. So if there's one application you like, and you always want it on one workstation, these window rules make it happen. Uh, very, very, very cool. So let's come back into that. You have decoration and animations. I've kind of simplified a lot of them. The default has rainbow borders. Super annoying. Probably 1% of you actually like rainbow borders. So during the install process, you'll have some questions. Highly recommend you go through that and say no to window borders. And if you do happen to do it, uh, you can actually go into the user scripts directory and disable window borders. So where are all these files located is probably your next question. And um, let's just come on over here and go into dot config hyper. Um, let's just take it over here. Bam. And you can see most of the configs here. If you go into user scripts, um, we can go and see rainbow borders. I just renamed it dot back. So if I wanted rainbow borders back, I could just re-enable it. Um, for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that as I just wanted to show you where a lot of these things were. So you're not going, oh, what's this or what's that? On top of it, documentation has vastly improved. So Jay Coolit has his own wiki. So if you're like, hey, what are all the hotkeys for this or that? He has, if you just do here, you do the mod key in H or the Windows key H, it'll show you kind of how everything's mapped. And that'll show you different wallpaper effects. You can add like new R to it or, or monochrome filters, screenshotting, different Rofi themes for launching programs. Uh, the pa power application menu is all built by him too. Very, very slick. I got to say, he put a lot of time and effort into it. 
And you might be thinking, oh, okay, Titus, but is this another Arch only thing? Because I don't like Arch Linux. That's where Jay Coolit and Wiley added all these things to my Linux utility. Because I was one, really impressed because I installed this on my Ubuntu laptop. Works perfect. Installed it on my main PC, which was Debian based. Works perfect. And I installed it on this machine, which is Arch uh, Linux. Mostly works. <laughs> I'll get into some of the little bugs that I run into. As you know, anytime I run into Wayland, there's always something. You know, there's always some little gotcha. And I like these 10 minute videos here on the main channel. And I wanted to announce some changes too on this. But if you look here, I actually did a live stream on my secondary channel. And I'm actually going to, for 2025, make a big change here. Uh, a lot of people don't know I even have a second channel. So I'm bringing all my live streams over to my main channel here, just so all my content is in one place. I'm tired of splitting it between multiple channels and you can watch this entire live stream. I think this ended up being about two hours. Yeah, two hours or so of me going through. Uh, thank you guys so much on bare metal installing Hyperland. And you can kind of skip around and go, okay, how's this going? And you see all the little hiccups I run into. I had an NVIDIA card, but I ended up having like a monitor issue where the refresh rate wasn't showing. So a lot of this is me kind of going back and forth. So it shows real problems with real solutions, but I didn't want to just make a, a VM install video, which Speaking of which, when it comes to jcoolit or Hyperland in general and any customization, Hyperland does not do well in virtual machines. So don't anticipate it actually working in a virtual machine. You almost have to do it on bare metal. So I highly recommend having like a thumb drive you can install it on or a secondary hard drive would be ideal. Past the jcoolit customizations and everything I just showed, I highly recommend the actual Hyperland wiki. Now, Back in the day, one of my critiques of Hyperland was it was poorly documented. And that has changed. It is very well documented. If you run into problems, like if you had NVIDIA problems, what you can do is just click on the NVIDIA tab here, and it shows you all the different things you can do for NVIDIA, different driver setups, or using regular NVIDIA drivers, or using DKMS. If you're doing that, then you want to change these mode settings. It really does a great job of documenting. So big shout out to the Hyperland uh, project and the Hyperland team for adding all these documentations. Any problem I've had, I've pretty much been able to fix. So I mentioned earlier about bugs. What, what kind of bugs am I seeing in old Hyperland? It's little things, and it's probably some things can be tweaked or worked around, and some things just don't work quite as well as they do in my DWM XORG configuration. So I, I still like to do all my configuration uh, in thumbnails and GIMP. I want to do Affinity, but I just can't get it to work for crap in Linux. Don't get me wrong, I can get it to work and launch, but as soon as I start diving into more complex things, it falls apart. So GIMP is still kind of where it's at. Uh, let's let's just uh, make a quick thumbnail just so you can kind of see my workflow. Might be interesting to you, but also kind of see the bug as well. So I'm just going to go into like uh, probably pictures and screenshots from my home folder. So in here, we're just going to go pictures, screenshots. We're going to grab uh, the base hyperland. We're going to make the thumbnail right now. And we'll go into here. We'll grab my headshot. And you'll notice there's this little bug where this stops working um, after dragging and dropping into here. The drag and drop does work, but when I come back in, I'm clicking all over. It's just unresponsive, so you got to close it out, re reopen it again. Now it's working again, so great. Uh, come back into here. Let's do headshots. We'll just grab that, and we'll just grab my ugly mug, toss it into here. Bam, look at that. So we got our thumb shot, uh, and then we're just going to scale this up a little bit. Probably like a 2200 is what I'm feeling. Oh, yeah, there we go. Big. All right. Uh, a little bit dark around the edges. Let's just adjust those curves. As So far, so good, right? Well, we're about to crash it. So, all right. There we go. We've got that in. Everything else is looking good on here. This is where it kind of falls apart. And I use custom script foo stuff for shadows and outlines. And this is usually something I probably gonna have to go through and maybe change or figure out what Wayland doesn't like in comparison to Xorg. 
uh, on the GIMP side settings. So as soon as I hit shadows and I try and apply these shadows, uh, well, let's let's actually add a selection first. Yeah, let's just add a selection around me and just make me pop out a little bit. So we'll just do a shadow and crash every time. Um, so a couple little bugs here or there, you know, between the file browser and GIMP. And I've been playing around for a week or two, and this is about the worst that I can find. So it's come a long ways. It's still not as stable as Xorg and, and DWM for me, but again, more simple, more minimal, always a better result in the long run. It doesn't look nearly as pretty as this. So that's the gist of everything I see with Hyperland. It's pretty amazing. And for most people, you're not going to care about these little bugs I showed. And chances are, heck, they actually might even watch this video and go, oh, well, that's a simple fix. Let me just put that in. <laughs> so uh, I, I always like coming back to Hyperland because I see it. And I got to tell you, when it comes to these things, oh, it just feels really good and it looks amazing has some of the best animations and overall love how this project is maturing and i look forward to its future however it wouldn't be me if i didn't try something else so we're gonna go explore some more wayland type stuff i'm not giving up on wayland this easy I have to know. I have to look into Sway. I have to look into DWL. I have to look into these other window managers in Wayland because everyone keeps telling me Wayland's the best. And I just not seeing that yet. But I'm not giving up. We're getting it. So having said that, I'll see you in the next video.